Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you five creative tips for using text in Photoshop. And before we get started, I just want to address the obvious, which is I got a brand new microphone. This absolute beauty, the Shure 55SH. This is basically the cheaper version of the Shure SM7B, even though I know I'm going to get probably killed in the comments. So if you don't agree with me, leave me a comment. And if you do agree with me, leave me a comment. Leave comments. I love comments. Let's get let's get talking about it because um, it might be something I might cover. Now, this lesson is not going to be a whole typography lesson because that is boring. Unless you want it. Again, <laughs> leave it in the comments if you want it. But uh, knowing the differences between kerning and tracking, I have found is more of a natural approach than an actual necessity. I think I came across one guy in the whole time I worked as a graphic designer who actually knew by dictionary the differences between kerning and tracking. The rest of us couldn't care. If it needed to be fixed, we'd fix it. Now, I know some people may be asking, well, if I have this background in graphic design, why don't I implement it more on my Instagram page and with my posts and stuff? And the main reason is because, well, two reasons. One, I don't want to. I want to actually just share photos. That's really where my passion lies really lately. And the other reason is um, I've noticed on my page anyway, I can't speak for anyone else's, but that when Instagram notices I've put text onto an image, it cuts the reach. Like in some cases, my arms reach further than what Instagram allows my photos to once it sees there's just text because it thinks there's an ad there and they can make money on it and they just hold you back to force you to pay ads. And I never do. So it's a waste. Of, it's a it's a silly game to play on my page, at least anyway. Uh, so that's that's a main reason why I don't. I personally don't use text all that often. But I do know of pages that you know are pretty big and they get away with using text on their image. So it's it's you know it's an individual thing. It's the algorithm. It's all this magical nonsense that none of us understand. I have literally no plan for this at the minute. So um, I have no files made. I'm literally just doing the intro. Then I'll do the screen capture. Then I'll do the outro. Uh, so I don't even know if this video is going to be long. So fingers crossed it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing me, it usually is. And if it is, I'll timestamp the different sections in the description so you can just click through if you want. In this first example, you'll see my behind the scenes. This one is actually when I detail the gear I use. So you can see the text there. And if I add a new layer and shift that five, add black and put the opacity to this to 60% usually. Now the text looks good, except for the images right underneath it. So we need to move that to the left and give some separation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer above the background layer. Shift F5, but this time instead of adding black, use the drop down menu and select color. And now let's select a blue color from the dark clouds in the top right hand corner. And that's going to be our new background color when we put this behind the photo layer. And then select control and left curly bracket to move it down amongst the layers. If you use control in the curly brackets, it moves your layers up and down the panel. So we're just going to move it right down to the bottom. And you can see here if we just select on and off, you can see that the photo layer is above that. So then the next thing we want to do is to shift and drag left. Holding the shift means that the image is not going to move up and down. And you can just position it to wherever you want along the horizon, so left or right. So once you have it in position, next we're going to add in the layer mask. So once you check the text, the next thing to do is to add a layer mask. So we're going to actually just blend this to the background layer nicely. So just get a layer mask, select G or go over to the gradient tool to select your gradient tool and make sure it's on black to hide your layer. And if you go from the far right edge across, you'll see what will happen right now. We still see the line of the original photo. We don't want that. So we want to start the gradient from the edge of the photo. So drag right across now. And you'll see it actually looks pretty good, but I, I think it can be better. So if we undo that again and try it one more time, maybe start a little bit further in and go as far as maybe the tripod. That's a far better result. Only problem now is it actually overlooks the bag. So we're going to use the backslash to see the, uh, the actual overlay. So this red overlay is showing the mask right now. So I'm going to get a brush and I'm actually just going to refine by um, bringing back in the, the opacity of the bag. This is the great thing about layer masks. You can just refine them as much as you want. If this is your first time seeing layer masks, check out the video I have above all about uh, layer masks. Once you're happy with this layer mask, let's turn on the dark layer again. You can see now the tripod and the bag are hidden. So we're going to add a layer mask to this and paint back in some of the scenes. So we're going to hide some of this dark area. First place is where the sun is. Let's let's enhance that a bit, give it a bit of a glow. And then we're just going to do and just fine tune just a little bit. Just subtly add back in the bag and the tripod. Now I'm only doing this really quickly. I would really have a full selection for that camera and tripod to make sure there's no lines and no extra white lines 
around it because if you have a bad selection, it's, it's always seen. And then once you're finished, that's really what I do for my behind the scenes of listing my gear products. So the next example is the customs house in Dublin. Uh, I was so lucky that day to get an absolute perfect reflection. So we're going to add massive text into this, just big bold text like you would have seen like in Avengers or something like that there. So what we're going to use is the text tool. So you can go over to the T or you can just press T on the keyboard. It is advisable that you learn some of these shortcuts. It makes it much faster than having to run to the side toolbar all the time. Select T and it'll come up with the Laura map zone. So I'm just going to type out Dublin and you'll see at the top there, I actually have the text center aligned, which is absolutely perfect for what we need. You can change it to left or right, whichever you need for this. We're going to go with this right uh, center aligned. So go up to the character window. If you don't have that, go up to a uh, window and then just select character and it'll appear on your right hand side. And I have my panels set up specifically how I like them. And I'm just going to select a font that I want to use. I want to use a, a strong font in this. I'm using the, the Helvetica uh, font family here at the minute. Um, let's go for the extra bold. And there's a few other options. I just want to go through quickly just for anyone who's new to text in Photoshop. So we're going to add a new layer here and I'm going to shift F5 and fill it to white just so you can see what each panel is doing. So we just bring that under the text. So the first thing I want to do is change the size of the text. That's going to be the first panel right here. The next thing I want to do is change the tracking. That's the second one down from the right. And that's the space in between the text for some stylistic choices now. Above that is the actual line spacing. So if we show you here, you can see that it does not match the size of the text I'm after changing. So if we select all the text and put it to auto, it'll set it to wherever it wants. If you change it to end it, then you can actually resize it in a couple of different ways. You can either type in the text or hover your mouse over the actual icon for it. And you can drag across to set it to whatever you like. So if you want it really close like this, you can have your text really close. So the lesson actually starts now. So let's drag this Dublin up to around about the top of the building. I want it to be hidden a little bit behind the building, not just behind the center of the building. And I'm going to make the tracking wider so it actually matches the width of the building. So a lot of times in typography, symmetry is your friend. So if you can see right now, I'm going to change the tracking to square it off to the building. And that's just going to add real depth to your design. So we're going to apply a layer mask to this. So I'm going to hide the text layer so we can see the layer. I'm going to quickly make a selection of this building. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail on how I'm actually doing this right now because I do have a future video coming up very soon with my favorite methods for making selections. So I'm just going to do a quick one here for the video sake. I'm uh, just going to refine it and then just hit for OK for selection. So hit OK, then bring back the text layer and then go down to layer mask. Now, because I've selected this, I've actually masked out the text in the shape of the building. As you can see here, if I all click, you see the building's white. So we want to control I to invert that and boom. Now the text is behind the building. So I'm just going to go up to the top left to refine this selection a little bit. Again, the beauty of layer masks, you can continually edit till your heart's content until it's absolutely perfect. This looks great, but we can take it a step further if we go to G for gradient and add a black gradient upwards from the bottom of the text to fade it out. So that looks really great, but now we need to add in the reflection because it's not a vampire, we would have a reflection. So control J to duplicate that layer and then head up to edit, transform, flip vertical, and then drag that down and align it with the building So once you line it with the building, we're nearly there. We just have to, it's too sharp. It doesn't match the actual building. There's a little bit of a blur because it's a reflection on the water. So we're going to right click on this layer and convert to smart object. And then we're going to go up to filter, Gaussian blur. And now I have an edit already done. So we'll just reset that and then just bring it back in to try and match the quality of the blur on the building at the bottom. Now that looks really good. I'm going to show you this next step in distort and down to ripple. We don't need it for this photo, I'm gonna show you anyway. So this would add a ripple effect to your text. Now the idea for this is to match the ripples that you would see in a scene. We don't really have any ripples because it was one of those moments with a perfect uh, reflection. Um, now the preview window, uh, I will admit straight off, it's not great. You can't really see what's going on because it's white text. So maybe in that instance, change the text to black before you start adding uh, the ripple effect so you can see it. But it's again, it's a, it's a because it's a smart object, you can change you can change this over and over again 
that's the great thing about using uh, smart objects. It doesn't matter. You can hit OK in this, and then if you need to change it, you can change it again. And it's just trial and error until you get it right. And that's basically what you need to do for this one. And then what I would do, the next step then, is to reduce the opacity. The text is far too strong, especially in the reflection. The reflections would always be darker. But I would actually just take the two uh, opacities down in this, just so it doesn't become too overpowering, because it's the text is fighting with the building, and you don't really want that. You want a nice... Uh, you want a nice balance, a nice hierarchy. So I think that's quite nice there. It's, it's a little bit set back from the building. In this example, I'm going to show you how to style text without styling it through the use of typography by using hierarchy and insinuating hierarchy through font weight and size. So in this case here, we're going to keep the text to the left one third of the image and the image to the right hand, the, the right one third. It's the way I like it anyway, because we read from left to right. I'm going to make sure as well that you can see here, whiskey is equidistance from the edge of the image to the edge of the bottle. And that's also vitally important too. You don't, you want space. Negative space is quite nice. In this case, I don't really take advantage much of the negative space. So the message here is terrible. It's on the rocks is what the message is, but we don't always get great briefs. But well, we want to insinuate whiskey and emphasize on the rocks. So I'm going to use a strong font for on the rocks. I'm already using a weak font for whiskey. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to resize the on the rocks, space it where it needs to be. I'm going to increase the tracking, so the space between the letters of whiskey. That means then that I can actually reduce the size of the word whiskey, but it still takes up a good bit of space above. So it's kind of, it's still, you don't want it to be too minimized above on the rocks. The next thing then is just to level it to the shoulder of the whiskey bottle that adds a lot more to the eye. Now the only thing is the top of this image is terrible. There's a big gap, a big headspace. So I'm going to bring this down and then you're going to see, see the one third line, boom. Rule of thirds are always applying even within graphic design and that doesn't look too bad. Still have space for website links. This next example is a design I actually did for a local singer songwriter called uh, Aaron Matthews. His details are in the description below. And he wanted the text to be the shape of his face. So I already had an image of him that I'd taken before, this photo I had here. And we're going to actually just make him take the, the shape of fake love by holding Alt and hover the mouse over between the two layers. And it'll actually clip it to the text, thereby taking the shape of the text. So it's like a fake layer mask. Now it's hard to read the text, so we're going to add a stroke so we can see it. So we're going to double click the layer into the styling options and select stroke. I already have uh, a gradient applied to this from another edit I'd done before. So we're going to just reset some of these settings. I'm going to leave it at reflective because that's actually what I want. I'm going to change the angle to zero so that it goes from top to bottom and click into the gradient. I'm going to change the first color, the shadow, to like a brownish color of some sort. And then once we, once we select that, Instead of changing the white color, what I'm going to do actually is select the brown color again and then click anywhere in the gradient, delete the white, and now bring it over to where the white was. And now I can change the image and it's referenced to, so that's relative to the dark brown. So you don't have to guess, it is already relative. And that's a quick thing to do. And you can see the preview of the gradient there. And if we hit reverse, that's actually sitting far better now. Then we just change the size of the stroke and we can decide whether we want the stroke to be coming from the outside of the text, inside the text, or halfway between the two centered in. We want it outside. And then the next thing we're going to do is just add in an inner shadow, just to add a little bit of depth to this text. So just go up and select that and boom, look at that. Now you can change it to whoever, but that, that actually just looks fine as is. And there you go, really, really simple to do. In this example, I'm going to show how to put text on the road. Full disclosure, this is not my photo. I got it off a free stock site called unsplash.com. The details are in the description below. I'm going to bring the logo into the photo and because that's why I'm going to change. So du double click on the layer, color overlay to my favorite dark color, 282828. I don't like black, I like an off black. So control T to scale it, just gonna put this in where it needs to be in the image, just anywhere really, Just it's just to add something to this image. So now we're going to go for T for text and just type in what we wanna type in. Oh, would you look at that, subscribe to my channel. I am so subtle about these things. I'm gonna select again a nice heavy font and then control T to scale it. Once you have the text ready, if you go up to edit and transform, you'll notice that the perspective, which we need is grayed out. What we need to do is right click and convert the text to smart object. Scale it up first so we have a nice reference. 
right click and convert to smart object because we're going to distort this so we need a good size then to edit transform perspective and on the top handles drag them left to right straight you can use a uh, the shift tool in this case i didn't use the shift tool just bring it in and there you go it's finding the shape of the road you just have to match in the road use the lines to match in the road and what i usually do now is i'll right click and go scale scale it down and position it to where i want it in the photo because this is going to change the perspective now again so that looks pretty good there but it's too far into the image i want it further down now the perspective is wrong right click again back up the perspective and it's just a trial and error back and forth back and forth perspective scale perspective scale until you get it now the only thing is the road here isn't actually centered so we're gonna to have to change with the position of the text you see it's a little bit to the right so it's gonna move that over a little bit again scaling up change in perspective take your time with this and set it right because you will you will get a nice tasty effect with this it's quite simple though but it, this is probably one of the simplest images to use on it as well as that, like I said before, with the fact that the road isn't actually centered in the image, uh, one trick to do, if you right click on perspective again, is use the middle and pull it to the left. And that'll actually change the angle as well. So then that's matching in with the road because whoever photographed this didn't actually stand directly in the middle of the road. It's just, again, some fine tuning. It's just constant fine tuning a lot of this trial and error back and forth back and forth back and forth so what a lot of people just do is they, they change the opacity but that's not going to be good enough you're not going to get the texture of the road so you can use blending options sometimes so the great thing with photoshop is the preview as you scroll down with the latest editions soft light looks pretty good for this but i'm going to show you another method as well so if we go back up to uh, soft light and Control j to duplicate that layer i'm going to get rid of the soft light for this one i'm going to show you a quick luminosity trick right now. So we're going to put a layer mask on this layer and then hide all the layers. So then we can just select the selection from the bottom. So go up to select, color range, and this normally selects colors, but if you're going to drop down menu, go down to midtones, and now we can see the midtones. And this is basically luminosity masks. We can really fine tune this to find possibly the worst looking parts of the texture of the road to make the text look like it's worn out. I would go into full details on this. You're basically just changing the range of what's viewable. So whatever's white is gonna be visible in this mask and whatever's black is gonna be invisible. So just change your settings until you get a nice texture in this for your text. And once you're, once you're happy, hit okay and it'll give you a selection. And now bring everything back visible again, select your layer mask, control H to hide the marching ants. And with a brush tool, set the black, paint out sections of the text and have a look at that. Just look at that look. already straight away you're seeing and you can just keep going going as much as you want i have the brush set to 10 percent, so just keep going as much as you need and keep an eye on where the actual wear and tear on the road is so the more wear and tear there is in the road the less of that text is going to be seen it's going to be a little bit more natural looking so that's looking absolutely great now really quick luminosity masks are quite difficult to do but with color range it's quite good so we're going to just blend these two layers together now just to give it a little bit more of a rounded um, shape to it and that's that's really it really really simple to do select both layers and control g to make a group and just to keep your just to keep your file nice and tidy so you can you can navigate easy in your layers and then to finish it all off add in a curves adjustment just so it ties in better in the road you can see now it's actually it's actually enhancing what we've done but we don't want it in the sky so we're going to add in the in the layer mask i'm going to put a gradient hiding it from the sky so there you go five creative ways of using text on photos through photoshop so i hope you did get something from that and you learn a little bit more and you have a little bit more understanding on how to use text and maybe even think towards if you plan on putting text on your photos you should really be planning it when you're shooting the photo it's much easier to actually compose it there on the spot than having to compensate later in post you know like fix it in post is good for most things but in some cases you could really have you could really nail it if you plan ahead so hopefully this has enlightened you to maybe think not outside the box but just think that more things are going to go into the box before you finish this project so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something from this. Don't forget to check out my Instagram and all the other good stuff on my social medias. I don't do that whole influence or socials. Uh, they're called social medias. Yep, that's what they call social medias. If you like this video, hit a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you feel like ringing the bell, ring it. But I've never done it, so I don't see the difference. <laughs> I'm so bad at this, it's unreal. Anyway, until the next time.
Later, Gators. <laughs>